Hi, welcome to another tutorial in my series on sketching trigonometric graphs. And in this tutorial, what I'm going to look at is the graph of y equals sine of 2x minus 30. I'm going to show you how we can build this graph out of the standard graph of y equals sine x. And after we've done this one, I'll give you a chance to do another one, a cosine one, very similar to this, based on the ideas that I'm going to be talking about. Okay, so how do we go about sketching this one? Well, first of all, as I said, it's based on one particular graph, and that is y equals sine x. And what I'm going to do is let f of x equal sine x. So, what does the graph of sine x look like? Well, you should be familiar with it. It basically is a wave that goes from minus 1 to 1, crosses the x-axis at naught, 180 degrees and 360 degrees. And you can see that my x-axis goes from naught to 360 degrees and is split up in 15 degrees intervals. Okay, so how do we head towards this graph here? Well, essentially, first of all, what we need to do is consider the graph of sine 2x. And I've let f of 2x equal sine 2x. Remember that when you do f of 2x, I'm replacing any x in f of x, okay, with a 2x. So instead of having sine x now, we now have sine 2x. And what does this transformation do? Well, if you were looking at my earlier tutorials, you'd have seen that this represents a stretch, scale factor a half, parallel to the x-axis, with the, any points on the y-axis being invariant. So basically, this means that any point on this curve, okay, any, any point, let's say this one here at 90 degrees across and one unit up, gets pushed towards the y-axis. So instead of being at 91, it's now halved, that distance is halved, so it appears at 45, 1. Okay? This point here at 180 degrees 0 now gets pushed towards the y-axis by half and it now goes to 90 degrees dip down here at 270 minus 1, gets pushed towards the y-axis, ends up at 135 degrees minus 1. And finally 360, 0, gets pushed to 180 degrees, 0. So you get something looking like this. Okay? Now remember that the sine wave will carry on like this past the 360 degrees. So what we can do is just continue this wave beyond what I've got here. So we'll just put that on. Okay, so hopefully you can see this wave continuing on. So that is sine 2x, f of 2x in this case. Now how do, do we go from here? Where do we go to build this up? sine of 2x minus 30. Now you've got to be very careful over this stage. What I'm going to do is let g of x equal sine 2x now. And what I'm going to do is let this x be x minus 15. I'll show you why. Okay, We're going to consider g of x minus 15. I'm going to replace the x in sine 2x with x minus 15. So we end up with 2 bracket x minus 15. So that when I expand this, I get 2x minus 30, what we need to plot here. Okay? So you've got to be very careful over this bit. Now what does g of x minus 15 do to the graph? Well, if we replace any x with x minus 15, what that represents is a translation, a translation of 15 units to the right. 
a movement of this graph of 15 degrees to the right parallel to the x-axis. So if we take this point here at the origin clearly it's going to move now to the 15 degrees. Where this graph peaks at 45 degrees 1 is now going to move 15 degrees to the right and instead of being at 45 degrees is now going to be at 60 degrees. And we can apply that to all these key points. 90 degrees moves across to 105. The 135 moves across to 150. 180, 195 and so on. So what we get is a graph like this. Okay, the graph then of the sine of 2x minus 30. So I hope you've been able to follow that, okay? And as I said at the beginning of the tutorial, what I'd like to do is give you one to try and then I'll run through it afterwards. So here it is then. What I'd like you to do is so if you could sketch the graph then of y equals the cosine of 3x plus 45 degrees. So you might like to pause the video and when you're ready come back and I'll take you through it and you can check your answer. Okay, well let's see how you got on. Well first of all, what we've got to do is know what the graph of cos x looks like. I'm labeling y equals f of x, f of x equaling cos x. So what does the graph of cos x look like? Well you should know that it's again a wave function. This time starts at 0, 1, drops to 90 degrees 0, then 180 degrees minus 1, 270 0 and then 360 degrees and 1. Okay so hopefully you thought about that sketch. Now to head towards this what we've got to do is consider the graph of f of 3x. In other words cosine of 3x. We're replacing the x here with a 3x. And what does that do? Well it's a stretch of scale factor a third parallel to the x-axis with the y-axis invariant. So in other words, any points on this curve get pushed towards the y-axis and their values are a third of what they are on the x-axis. So for instance this point here at 90 degrees, if we do a third of that becomes 30. So we'd we can imagine that this curve starts here, remember points on the y-axis are invariant, and it's going to drop down to the 30 degrees. This point here at 180 degrees minus 1 gets pushed towards the y-axis. We third this value of 180, a third of it is 60. So it's going to be at its lowest point here at the 60 degrees. And if we continue that for 270 and 360, what should you get? Well, you should get this particular wave. Okay? We've basically taken this wave squashed it up towards the y-axis if you like. Okay? Pushed it up here. And if we continue this curve it would look something like this. Now this is the tricky bit. Again what we've got to do is head towards this plus 45. And so what we do is we define or think of g of x as equaling cos 3x and we need to think of what we multiply 3 by to give us the 45. It's got to be 3 fifteens. So what I'm going to do is replace the x with x plus 15. So we get 3 bracket x plus 15. So when you expand it you end up with 3x plus 3 fifteens which are 45. And this tells us that we've got to take our graph of g of x cos 3x and 
Expos 15 tells us we now have to translate it 15 units to the left, parallel to the x-axis. Okay? So, all our points on here, we just got to slide our curve then 15 units to the left. So, if we take a point like this, it's at 30 degrees, it's now going to end up at the 15 degrees. Point like this one, 120, 1, just moves to the left 15 degrees, now going to be at 105, 1, and so on for all the points. So, what do we have? This graph. Okay, so I hope you've got that and that you can apply this technique then to any graphs that have this kind of format.